Hey everybody, welcome. Patty Ann here. Hey, I've got something exciting to show you today. I've actually done this card yesterday for my patrons and we did two different ones, but I love this one so much that I wanted to do it again. So I know where a lot of you are from. It's pretty dang hot out still, but you know, you need to get in the Christmas spirit because if you're making gifts for people, you have to get them started early. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to look here and see who's here. 126, Barbara, hey. Craft Life, hey, welcome. Where y'all from? Chow, I know where you're from, California, and Tammy. Okay, welcome, welcome. Thank you very much for joining me today. Um, those of you that are my patrons, I recognize some of you. You're going to recognize the card that I'm making today because it's one of the ones that I had done for you yesterday. But I just liked it so much, as I said, I wanted to do it again. And Chow, you did a beautiful job on yours. Hey, Cheryl Ann. Oh, thanks. Isn't it pretty? I really like that back there. I think it's so cool. Hey, Michelle. Craft life through from Yvette. Hey, how are you guys? So I'll just wait a couple of minutes and then I'll get started. And by the way, don't forget if you're not subscribed to please subscribe. And also give me a thumbs up if you wouldn't mind. If you do like my videos, I really appreciate it. So let's see. Oh, Alabama. Okay. Tammy's from Alabama too. Hey Doreen, how are you? <laughs> so, like I said, I'm going to do one of the cards I had done yesterday with my patron group. Aw, oh, thanks, Chow. The other one that I did yesterday for the patrons, and you probably won't be able to see it very well because of my green screen, so I'll show you down there. But this one was also made using a um, dingbat. This part right here was the dingbat, and then I used a new font to me, and I'll tell you about that in a few minutes. So, let's see. Very hot here in South Miami. I bet it is, so maybe this will make you remember chillier weather, although it probably never gets really cold down there. So, the one we're going to work on today is this one called String of Lights. So, let me get organized here. There's this. I'll just move this thing right out of the way because I don't need this and hidden behind here is all the stuff I do need. So I'll just delete that. And so here's what the finished card, well, let me have you look here first. And you're gonna see my some of my contraptions down here, but that's okay. Okay, so here was the card I was trying to show you before that you couldn't see very well because of the um, green screen. Isn't that cute? I love this checkerboard look. So that's one of them. And the one we're gonna make today looks like this. And on my screen in just a second, I'm gonna show you where to find these fonts and the dingbats. So let me organize my stuff again. Bring you up here. Okay. All right. So the first thing I wanted to show you how to do or show you where to find it was the dingbat doodle that I'm using. And it's this one right here that looks like a string of lights. Make it any size I want to. And notice up here it's called Janda Christmas Doodles. And you find that by going to defont.com. So if we look up here, let's see, where would it be? Here. Yeah. Uh, here. <laughs> okay. Here's Janda, J A N D A, Christmas in defont.com. And all you have to do when you get to this is just come over here to the right hand side and download it. So I see 19 people downloaded it yesterday. Those were probably some of the people in my Patreon class. But anyway, these are all the doodles that you get in here, or glyphs. And the one we're gonna use, like I said, is the light bulb one. And the other one that I used yesterday was this one right here, if you can see where I'm circling. So what I did was I colored it and I cut out all of the, and I'm not sure how well you can see this, but I cut out all of the bulb part because I just wanted the bow and the holly. And then I put text on there. All 
Oh. <laughs> I just started something called Nightbot, and I see it is saying something, and I don't know why it's saying that. Because if you put things in all caps, that's supposed to be a question. So maybe you better not do that while I have Nightbot on there, because I don't know how he actually works. So, Okay, so let's go back up to my silhouette. Okay, so here we are in silhouette, and as I said, all I had to do was to go ahead and download this dingbat from the Janda Christmas, which was from Defont.com. Janda Christmas Doodles. I'll move that over out of our way so it doesn't bother us right now. And so what I want to have is I want to have something that looks like this in this little picture right here. So, in, other, in order to do that, I'm going to have to duplicate this because notice there are a lot more light bulbs up here. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, are you talking about, um, are you talking about Nightbot? Yeah, I think if you type in all caps, they think that's spam, so they delete it. So try not to do all caps. And I'll have to work on that and make that not do that. So... Sorry about that. It's just an automated thing that does stuff. Okay. Anyway, we're back to the light bulbs, and I'm going to duplicate them. And there's several ways I can do that. I can either hit uh, Control and D for duplicate, or I can come up, or I can right click on it, and sometimes and duplicate. Oh, it's because it's still text. There we go. Now I can duplicate it like that so either way or I could have just held down my alt key and pulled it apart so that it would be uh, um, two pieces okay so there's my two pieces and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this little bug tool up here that I love to use right up here is bluish color right now I'm going to scroll right in here just so I can make sure that this is lined up well like that then I think I'll just take all this and right click and say group. All right. Um, but what I should have done before I did that was I should have traced this first. So let's see if I can still trace it. It's going to be a little bigger for me to trace. Um, I will go over here to the trace tool and see how this works. It would have been better had I done it first. So I'm going to come over here to the toast. Some people say it looks like a butterfly and click on this. And then what I need to do is I need to select my trace area. And the reason why I'm doing this, if you're not familiar with this program at all, is if I try to color these light bulbs now, all it's going to do is color the outside edge. No matter how hard I try, I can't select and color the light bulbs themselves. Uh, yeah, I am thinking that Tammy's answering everybody. Cricut Explore. Oh, yeah, child. Thank you. Yeah, you can do it with your Cricut Explore, your Cricut Maker, your Scan and Cut. We just use this software to make our projects, and then we send them over to whatever machine. So anyway, again, what you'll do is you'll just click on, let me minimize this for a sec, come over to the very right-hand side. Hover over one you think is the trace panel, and you'll learn these in no time if you don't have this software. You just click on the one that looks like a piece of toast and say select trace area. And then I'm going to come over here and I'm just going to draw a big box around this area that I want to trace. Just like that. And it's taking a moment. Oh, I've got to click on the word trace. Well, it wasn't ready yet. Hang on just a second. So let me click on this again. Let me do select the trace area and select it. Okay, I might have to just restart this one page because I've had this open since about six o'clock this morning, so maybe it's just uh, not cooperating because of that. Oh, and you know what else? You know what it might be, y'all? Might be because I made these so light colored. Let me change these back to black 
because our machine, when we trace, it can see dark or contrast colors much better. So this is probably going to work now. Watch. Yep, there we go. That's what the problem was. So if ever yours doesn't trace, it may be because there's not enough contrast between what you're trying to trace. So this is perfect now. And I'm going to scroll in just to make sure that it looks as good as I think it does. And that looks pretty good. Let's see if I back it down a little bit if it makes it any smoother looking. I'm not really, really concerned about this because I'm going to make this a print and cut. You can print and cut it on any machine that you have. So all I have to do now is click on trace. And let me scroll back out so you can see the whole thing. And I can just remove this part because this is the part I need right here. It's the trace. And I don't need this part anymore. So I'm going to make it a little bit smaller and just push it out of the way just in case I discover I need it because I make an error or something. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to notice when I clicked on that just right now. Did you notice what happened? I got all these little teeny weeny squares. Those are sometimes called nodes and sometimes called points. I don't want those right now. I want to be the selection tool, the regular selection tool. So I can either click on just the V as in Victor on my keyboard, just hit the V key, or I can come up here and grab this select arrow key up in the upper left hand corner. I'll select that this time. And notice what that did. That put a box around everything, and that's really what I wanted, because that's going to allow me to grab one of these corner boxes and make this thing smaller. I want it a lot smaller, not only so we can work on it, but I'm not going to need it that big for my card. So, all right. So what we have now is we've got this whole thing, and now I will be able to color it. But before I do so, what I'm going to do before I color these individual light bulbs, I'm going to come up here to the upper left hand corner where there's this little cross hatch which shows that things are um, transparent. I'm going to click on that so I can get a different color and then all my color swatches come down. And I'm just going to turn this into a light or a medium gray color like that. Okay. That is perfect, that's just what I want. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna come up here to Object and Release Compound Path. Now when I click on Release Compound Path, what that's going to allow me to do is to color each individual bulb because it's gonna make each one its own little part, a little square around each part. So watch what happens. When I release Compound Path, whoop. okay, if I scroll way in, you'll be able to see there's a little square around this. There's a little square around this part and on this part and this part. So all these little squares mean that I can color these individually. Well, what I decided to do was I just decided to leave these little silvery things, the uh, end part silver. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna color the light bulbs. So I decided yesterday when I was doing this in my class that I wanted to just do the Roy G. Biv. I don't know, maybe you don't learn that anymore in school, but a hundred years ago when I was in grade school, we learned about the um, rainbow by remembering Roy G. Biv because R stood for red, the O in Roy was orange, the Y in Roy was yellow. So I'm gonna do Roy G. Biv. <clears throat> I'm gonna click off and click back on right here. Got my first light bulb and that's gonna be Roy R, red. So I'm gonna come up here to the color swatch, change it to red. Okay, the next word, next letter in Roy G Biv is O for orange. <clears throat> the next one is Roy, R-O-Y, yellow. So all I'm doing is going up and down. See, notice I click this and it grabs that bot, that uh, bulb and it puts a box around it and I know it's selected then. And then I can come up here. The next letter is G for G, Roy G, that's his middle initial, I guess. And his last name must be Biv, B is in blue. <coughs> so 
think the lights with Merry Christmas would be beautiful. Oh, that would be pretty. Ah, yeah, Barbara, that's the same thing that, um, I think, who is it, Tammy? Stephanie, I think, has that same issue. Her shows up in a different place. She has to hit that drop down arrow or something. But R O Y G B blue. And then I got a little confused here. I don't know. Indigo, maybe that's indigo. And Roy G Biv and then Violet. <laughs> so there's my Roy G Biv. And then I had extras over here, so I just started again with Roy. Red. And notice if you don't have the new um, updated version yet, I had to get it since I have the Cameo 4, but if you don't have it yet, notice this. When I come up here to this paint swatch, see this row of colors right here? These are my most recently used colors. Starting over here on the left, the last one that I used was a red, and you can see that was. Then I used that purple or violet, and before that the blue, so they stay in order up here. So you don't have to keep grabbing the eyedropper if you don't want to. All right, so let's see, Roy, so I need the orange again. There it is, Roy, R -O, and the yellow. So there's all of those so far. All right, let me scroll back out so we can see how it's looking. Looking pretty darn good, I think. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna click on the outermost part to get a big box around everything. And I know I don't have any of these individual colors selected because if I look up here in the color palette, it shows me what I have selected. And I have the gray selected, which I'm gonna change that because I want my wire to be black like that. And then look at that, isn't that pretty? I just love this card. So let's see. Yes, you have to have. Oh, you didn't hear that before, Barbara. Wow, Roy G. Biv. Yep. <laughs> In the UK, it's Richard of York gained battle in vain. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm just looking at a few of your comments. Oh, yes, you can certainly use a. That's not a daft question. You can use it for sure with Explore Air, Explore Air 2, Scan and Cut you're making these into SVGs or if it's a print then cut you're going to save it as a JPEG. I'll show you really quickly why you have to have the business edition if you're using it for your Cricut though. So let's pretend like I want to save these things for my Cricut machine and I come up here to file. Oh first I have to show you I'm going to change this right now I'm in business edition. I can go ahead and change this back if I go to help, view in, and this is perfect because I can show you guys. Standard edition is the free version that you have to get first. So, and that will work and do a lot of things, especially if you have a cameo. You might not have to have the business edition ever, ever, but for Cricut, you must. So if I grab both of these, I come up here to file, save selection as, save to my hard drive, I want you to look down here where the shows the thing, how I can save this, the types of files. There are only three options if I'm in the business or the basic or free edition. We cannot use any of those types of files with our Cricut machines. Now, you won't be able to save this as a file you can use for Cricut unless you have the business edition and as Tammy told you how much it costs and it's a one-time purchase you'll have it forever so let me put mine back to business edition by going to help view in business edition and then I'm going to show you what will happen if I'm trying to save this for my Cricut and I have a Cricut Explore Air 2 so if I go to file save as Save to hard drive. Now I want you to look down here and look at all these options I get for saving. I get, uh, can I move it up higher for you guys? Whoa, yeah. Okay. I get the silhouette, just as we have before. I get SVG. That's what allows us to make our own SVGs in this program, make ourselves, and save them for our crickets. 
You can also save PNGs, JPEGs, and JPEGs are what I usually recommend for print then cut. And there's a few more here, but we're mostly interested in SVG, in my opinion, and JPEG. So anyway, that's how that works. So let me get rid of that. Okay, so now the next thing I want to do is I'm going to group all this together so I don't mess it up. And I don't need to worry about whether I'm you know, welding it or making it a compound path or anything like that because this is just going to be a print then cut. So let's move this out of the way for a minute. And let's just work. Oh, I don't want to do it like that. Let me hit Control Z on my keyboard. I want to keep it proportionate. Notice since I just grabbed this middle box right here and I went shoving it over. Look what it did. That's not what I want. Control Z is the same thing as undo or I could hit this undo arrow up here and what I want to grab is one of these corner ones because that's what keeps it proportionate all right I'm just gonna move that off of here and move this off of here and we're gonna start working on the actual components that we need so I'm gonna have you look down here again at my desktop so the first thing that you obviously need is the card base. Now I always make my cards, and everybody likes to make theirs different sizes, but I always make my card to be the size called an A2. And that means it fits perfectly in these envelopes that I buy really cheaply from Staples in a big old box. So, and then this is the card size. Well, let me just show you. Here's the finished card, and it will fit perfectly right into my A2 card, just like that, or envelope, just like that. So that's the size I always, always make. Okay. So to do that, if you have a piece of cardstock, all you have to do is cut it in half, exactly in half, and you'll be able to make two cards. Because, see here's one half, and that makes one card, and then this was the other half, and this made this card. So one piece makes two cards. So basically what you end up with is a piece that's eight and a half, eight and a half by 5.5. And that's just the size of a half of a sheet of this, okay? All right, enough of that. So I don't really need to cut this out on my Cricut machine or my Silhouette, my Cameo, anything like that. I'm just gonna put that aside. But the next thing I do want to do is I'm going to look at my card here. And I have all these pieces. I've already cut them so you don't have to wait for me. I just want to show you how to do this. So I've actually even labeled mine. And I'll show you these up there in just a sec. So these are all the components of my card. Let me get my blank card back out again to show you. This is how it goes together. I like to use lots and lots of pieces because I think it adds a lot to it if you do this. I think it just makes it look so rich. This is what I've done, like this and like this. And then the last piece is here. And I didn't just put it down here flat and tape it on here, but I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but I actually pop dotted it up a little bit so it was raised up of this. And in addition to that, I also use the cuddle bug. And I'll show you guys how to use a cuddle bug just in case you have one. Um, it's, you don't have to do that, but I love the texture that it adds. So I always add that to my cards. So, all right. So let's go back up here. All right. So the first piece we don't need to worry about, and that's the base of the card. The next piece that I have to worry about is this piece right here. And let me show you one thing. I wrote this out. What? Well, I'll write this out for you again in, down below this video so you'll know in case you want to remember or don't remember what size is to make yours. So the black one, since my card was 5.5 by 4.25 when it was folded in half, I make this card, this piece, so it'll fit nicely, 5.25 by 4.0. So, 
So in other words, I have my card base here, and then this is gonna fit perfectly on there, leaving a really nice border all the way around it. This piece, well, I just take off a quarter of an inch. So this is now gonna be 5.25 by four. Then the net, and I'm gonna cut that out. Then I'm also gonna cut out this piece that goes behind. Oh, I need to, sh no. Behind here. Okay, so I'm gonna have two black pieces that cut out. I think that's all I have, or two, yes. So this piece, and I've just measured it, it's just trial and error. I've done this piece to be five inches because I wanted it to be the same as this piece. Wait, oh, wait, wait a minute. No, I wanted it to be the same as the red. Okay, so the red piece. Let me tell you about that one first. This red piece. Oh, so I'm having you look down here still. So this black piece was, I click off, click back on, 5.25 by four. The red piece is a quarter of an inch smaller than that. So the red piece then is five inches by 3.75. Notice it's just a quarter of an inch shorter all the way around. And then this was my original piece back here, the white. And if I make that a gray, you'll be able to see it more clearly. All right, so now this black piece here, I made that to be the same size as the red and again I'll put these dimensions down below the video when I'm done and then the next thing that I did was I put this on top of here like that and that's all that I had to do so let me show you how I did this part so I know I wanted this square to be 5 times 1.5 so I came over here and got a rectangle and drew it out and I'm not gonna keep it as red, but I can leave it as red right now so you can see it. And I made that piece five inches. So five inches wide, hit the five and hit, whoopsie, I think I may have messed up. Nope, I didn't, five. And then the height is 1.5. And this is the piece onto which I'm going to put my bulbs and the text Merry Christmas. So I'm just gonna leave it red for right now. or I'll just leave it red for right now. And I'm gonna bring these guys down. I'm gonna right click on them and say, bring to the front. And a lot of this will be familiar to you no matter what program you're using. So those might be a little bit too big, but I kinda like them like that. Huh. All right, let's wait until I get my text out. Now for the text, as I said, I'm using a new to me text because I wanted something that was very clean looking. And I thought this one called Caviar Dreams was perfect. Caviar Dreams, I really liked it a lot because it was just nice and neat. And not only can you use it like this, but you can actually make it bold if you still have it where it's editable text and it is right here. So I can come over here. Now those of you who aren't familiar with this program, don't get nervous. This might seem like a lot but it's really, it, you'll love it. So I just come over here to the text style panel. And so now in Caviar Dreams, if I want to, I could make those letters bold or I could italicize them if I wanted to. I could actually even underline them if I wanted, but I don't want any of that stuff. <laughs> so I'm gonna go, whoops, I'm gonna go back. Okay, notice this. When I'm off of this and I click, I just get all these little boxes around that. That's not what I want to edit the text. If I want to edit the text and make it not underlined or italicized, I want to go back into the text editing and I double click to get that. And then notice there's this green box, very faint for you probably around there. And there is, um, this little line right here and that lets me know for sure this bluish line here that i'm in the text editing mode 
So I can just click over here and turn off underline. Well, I think I can. Okay, I can just do it like that and get rid of all that stuff. I didn't need to have it selected like I did. Anyway, so I'm gonna make it much smaller and I'm gonna put it up here. Notice it went behind again. So what I'm gonna do this time is I'm gonna right click on the red box and say, send that to the back. All right, perfect. Of course, I don't want it to say caviar dreams. So let me fix that. Double click on this. I gotta change all this. I don't want it to say that. So I'm gonna make it say, Mary, all caps, Merry Christmas. Okay. Now let's bring it up. And that's looking pretty good. I'm going to change that box now to white or maybe a light gray so I can see clearly what I'm doing there. All right. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of liking that. Now you might be noticing a slight tinge of red around all of these black things. Let me show you. Can you see that little slight bit of red? Those are just showing me where the cut lines would be. They're not actually going to print or anything, but I can go ahead and turn those off right here, up at the very top left-hand corner. Uh, the first swatch is the fill color. The second thing is the line color. And I'm gonna change that line color to transparent by going here and clicking on the little thing that looks like the grid. And now there's no longer that red stuff there. So I can scroll back in like this. And I am liking that pretty much. I love that font. <laughs> All right, so let me scroll back out. And I think I will just, oh, well, I could try to center this by clicking on the box and this and this, but most times I just do it by eyeball. So I'm just gonna right click after I grab it all and say group. Okay, so there we go. So that's ready and I can get rid of this one now if I want to. Click on it and delete on my keyboard. So let's bring this black piece on that's gonna go behind it. Perfect, very nice. I'm not gonna wanna leave it gray because if I do and I send that to print then cut, it's going to print gray. If I change it to white, it won't be a problem because our machines don't print uh, white. I think if I change it right now, it might change everything. Let me double check. Yeah, I don't want to do that. Undo. So what I need to do is just ungroup. And now I can just grab the gray box. And you, you know I have the gray box selected because if you come up here to the color swatch area, you can see that light gray color. So I'm just going to go oop and click it and now it's white perfect and now i can regroup all this together group and it's perfect just like that okay so i want to show you now how to print then cut this whether you're on a uh, cricut machine well first i'll do silhouette since i'm here so the first thing i need to do to make this a print then cut for my cameo is i need to come up here on the upper right hand corner under where it says send. I'm going to click on that because that's the page setup panel. And the, I'm going to stay right here in this first little box first because there's some things I need to do here. So my machine's a Cameo. I can leave it like that. I only have the Cameo regular 12 by 12 mat, so I'm going to leave that okay. But what I do need to change is this right here, media size. I'm not using a 12 by 12 piece of paper for this or piece of cardstock. I'm just going to go ahead and change this so that it's eight and a half by 11 or letter size. Because that's what I'm using and watch what's going to happen on my mat. Okay, it changed it just like that and that's exactly what I need. But that's not enough. That's not all I have to do to let my machine know it's a print then cut. Hey Lori, <laughs> I'm going to come up here to page set up again the third little icon over if I click on you notice what it says when I highlight over there it says okay, it says um, registration marks and right now they're set to off 
I'm going to set them to on. And when they're on, I know that I cannot put anything to be printed and cut out in this little, um, I can't think of the word for it, uh, checkerboard area. Or I can't put anything, imagine that there's a line right here going from this right angle, angle over here. I can't put anything there. And if I'm afraid I'm not going to remember where those things are or what to do, I actually can come back to the very first icon up here, click on it for page setup, and I can come down here for the show the print border and show the cut border. And then that makes that border for me that I know I better not go outside of. So I know I better put not put that M on that line like that because it's not going to work right. And I know I better not put it in that checkerboard area, but I can put it here. And I actually, when I did mine, I made a bunch of them because I thought, you know, I'm going to try this and make my um, backing pieces, my cardstock, different colors to see what I like the best. So when I was doing that, all I did was hold the Alt key on my keyboard, notice my hand up here, it's on the purpley color, violet, in Roy G. Biv. Going to hold down the Alt key and watch what happens to the finger. Changes into a plus sign. When it changes into a plus sign, I can just drag another one of these off to duplicate it. Still a plus sign, I can drag again. Still the plus sign, I can just keep dragging these till you know, the cows come home. Drag another one. I might be getting down to the limit. I don't, I might be able to put one more here. I can. Okay, and then I can put one over here too if I want to by holding my Alt key and just dragging it and then using this, <clears throat> excuse me, green little arrow or green circle right here and I hold down the shift key on my keyboard and I just do it like that. The reason why I hold down my shift is notice how it kind of goes boink right into place when it's at a 90 degree angle from where it was. See it? Boink. <laughs> so I like that. Oopsie. So I just move him right over here and he'd fit perfectly. All right. So what I only wanted though was one. So I'm going to just delete these one by one. Okay. So I just want this guy right here to show you what I would now do in uh, Cameo and then we'll go over to Cricut Design Space for those of you there. So going to click on, or I don't even need to click on this. I'm just going to go to send. Oh boy, look what's happening. It's cutting all this stuff. I don't want all that stuff to cut. Heavens to Betsy. So what I need to do is click on this and come over here where it says cut and change it to say cut edge. And then notice what's going to happen. All it's going to do is cut the outer edge of this. Now, before I do try to cut this, obviously, I need to go ahead and print it. So I would go to File, up here in the upper left-hand corner, Print. And I always change my preferences when I'm doing Print Then Cut to the best quality. And I change my paper type to match as closely as I can to whatever I'm using. And then I would say OK. And it would print it. And I'm going to cancel that, though, because I've already done a bunch of these. And then after it would be printed, I would just put this page on my mat. This little square would have been printed. This line would have been printed, as would this line. The little checkerboard doesn't get printed. <coughs> and then um, I would just go ahead and cut it. So I'm not going to go through that part because we're not going to do that much. I'm going to go back to design now. Now, if we're in Cricut Design Space and we want to know how to print and cut this, <coughs> excuse me, I'm going to get something to nibble on for a second. <coughs> I don't know why when I talk so much I start coughing, sorry. Okay. So what I just did was I selected this. You see by drawing a box around it. And then all I'm going to do is come up here to File, Save Selection. Because I don't want to save all this junk right now over here. I just want to save what I've selected. So Save Selection, Save to Hard Drive. 
And again, since I have the business edition, I can come down here and I'm going to save it as a JPEG. When I do print and cuts, I save it as a JPEG. And I'm not going to save it there. I'm going to save it in my downloads. Merry Christmas light bulbs. I just better number it number two just in case. And I'll save it. Okay. And I'll just leave these numbers as they are. They save. Okay. So now I'm going to go ahead and go to Cricut Design Space. And I'm going to do a new project. I'll make this bigger. I'm going to upload, and you'll see I've been playing with some other things. <laughs> upload an image. Browse. And I'm in my download folder. So it should be, where is it? Hey. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. For a minute, I thought I forgot to save it as the right thing. Okay, here it is. Merry Christmas, light bulbs, too. So I'll open that. Here it is coming in like this. I'll just say complex if I want to, because I usually do. And it looks perfect just like this. I'll go to continue. I'm going to save it as a print and cut. So I'll say save. The only thing is when we do bring it into our Cricut machines, we have to make sure that we size it the size that we need it to be. Because right now this is coming in at uh, 5 inch, 5.208 wide. So you may want to resize that, but watch. <clears throat> you know that trick I always show you guys about using um, Cricut Design Space and wondering when you're doing a print and cut, what is going to print and cut? Where is it going to cut? So many times people have it cut all around these light bulbs, around the letters, and they say, well, I didn't want it to do that. So all you have to do is come down here to where the blank canvas says blank canvas here. When you click down here on the lower right, doesn't look like anything happens but when you come up here to where it says color click there and change your background color to anything and what that does is it shows the background and then it shows exactly what's going to be cut okay so now if I go to make it there it is it's gonna print then cut just like this I would go ahead and continue And it's probably going to whine here because I don't have my machine turned on. But you notice I have an air too. <clears throat> and then I would send it to the printer and then just go ahead and do it. But it's nothing good's going to happen here because my machine is not turned on. So I'm going to cancel that. Yes, I do want to cancel it. But that's how easy it is to use anything that you make in the Silhouette software for your Cricut machine. The only difference is you have to have the business edition to have it to work. So, I just thought, since I have another one of these ready to go, I'm just going to put it together. So what I like to use, and I have a link for this down below. I don't know. This one's probably running out of tape. I have a lot of it, though. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put this together. I like using this ATG gun. Mine's as old as the hills. That's why mine's red. I think they're all pink now. Let's see, what was I supposed to do first? I believe the black and then the red one on top of that. So, I'm just gonna go ahead and tape this down. And I like using this as opposed to uh, wet glue because I just make a big old mess with wet glue. I get lumpy bumpies. I know a lot of people can use it easily, but I'm not one of those. So I like to use that. Okay, what's next? Oh, it's got to go on the white, so I can do this. Oopsie. Okay. Go ahead and put this on this white. I actually wrote that one in pencil, so maybe I can erase that and really use this. that so far so good so next comes this and this okay I'm gonna tape this to this but then I want to pop dot it up off of that so let's see 
put it on this. up over top of it. I can see. There we go. <clears throat> okay. Last thing I have to do is just get my little pop dots. I'll be right. Oh, darn it. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, y'all. I wanted to show you the, the, um, the new. Whoa, whoa. Come back. Oh, darn. Well, maybe I could still do it. I don't know. Maybe I'll just try to cuddle bug both of these. I'm a little bit worried because it's got stuff on the back. Let's give it a whirl. So here's my cuddle bug. And when I'm in doubt, <laughs> the thing, my go-to that I usually like to use is the dots. I just love the little dots. If I had something that said Christmas, I could use that. On the one I had done yesterday, I don't know if you could see, but I used this one that had lines that went across. And what it did was it kind of crinkled up my black print that I made. But I really liked how it turned out. I thought it looked kind of cool. Like that. I don't know if you guys can see my fingernails. A little middle school girl was trying to do my nails last night. <laughs> I don't know what they're supposed to be. But they're beauteous. Anyway, we had fun. <laughs> So here's my cuddle bug parts that I need. Let me open him up. Hopefully you can see. Now he, when you open it, it sticks. It has like little suction-y things that stick down to your table, so it's not going to move. All right. Then you get these three different plates. A big fat one uh, and two little skinny ones. And then this piece is the piece I'm going to use. This is what's got the dots on it. And I'm hoping this is going to work with this, like this, with that sticky. So, let get it unstuck here. <laughs> it's kind of hard with a little tiny space for the camera and stuff. So, all you do is you just stick this in the middle of this little folder. And actually, in our class, we learned how to make some things ourselves that you don't even have to purchase these folders. But you can get these inexpensively, a different brand that's not Cuddlebug. One of them is named Doris. And you can get those like from Joann's and places like that. So all you do then is you put the big fat one down first, then a little one, skinny one, then your folder with your card in it, and then the third one. And then you just run it through here, and I hope it's not going to be a problem since I have, oh, not a problem at all. So it run, you don't need any electricity. There's just a little handle on the side here that I'm rolling. It's out of your sight though. And let me take it back apart. Let's take it out of here. And uh, voila. Now hopefully it's not gonna stick too badly since it has tape on the back. All right, so let me show you what you got. Can you see? Can you see those little dots? I just love the texture. But that's just an added thing. You don't have to do that. Whoops. All right. Let me move him back out of the way now. Okay. And for my foam mounting dots, this is what I use. I just get this from the dollar store. It lasts forever and ever. So I just take this. And actually, I need to glue this first back onto my card. So I better put it on this side since I've already got a mess there. Just tack it down like that. Okay, now this is ready to go on here, just like that. And then all I do is put some of these dots, and I'm pretty generous with them because, you know, they're really cheap, a buck for a lot. I don't know if it says they're acid-free, but that really matters. 
You know, it says there's six feet, and when you think six feet, that doesn't seem like very much, but this stuff lasts forever. I'm gonna give it, I'm gonna give it a lot. Sometimes you don't have to give it that many. Then all you have to do is run your finger over here if you're not familiar with using these. So one side was sticky, and now I'm taking off this tape, which makes the other side sticky or reveals the other sticky side. And there you go. So I'm just gonna put this on here like that. Eyeball it. And I, okay, I have this, this little piece on a little bit crooked because remember that's the piece that I messed up. So let me put a little bit more tape on it and put it on properly. That should do. Okay, and there it is. There's my two cards, which I think are adorable. I just love that card. It's just so clean and crisp and looks great. And this is the other one from yesterday as well. Anyway, that's a lot of fun. I enjoy making these cards. And it was great because I didn't have to buy any rubber stamps at all. All I did was print and cut, color these with my machine, with my uh, software, I should say. Um, I was working on one earlier. Let's see, where did I put it? Okay, this one right here, just for a sneak peek of this one, if I have all the parts, yeah. This one right here was one I was working on. But I'll tell you the truth. I don't like it as well as my other one because there's not enough color, I don't think. Now, of course, it would go on a white card base. Let's put that like this. Okay. But what I didn't really like that well was this. Because this was just totally all black. I added the text here. And then I cut it out differently with just scissors to see if I could make it look some way I liked it better. But I don't know. There's just something about this that doesn't pop for me. But the reason why I brought this out at all was to show you that this was just black and white. I did get out my colored pencils and put some green in here and some red trying to pop it up a little bit more. But uh, I'm not crazy about it. But maybe if I finished it or redid it and cut it with my machine instead of with my scissors it could look better and you know especially down around the wording but that's just another one that I was messing with that I thought was kind of cool and again I'd probably pop dot this thing up originally on this one before I cut it off right here if this was like a Christmas tree bulb and I was originally gonna put a bow up here and I think that would be super cute a little teeny tiny bow out of satin but I cut that off of that one. Okay, so that's it for those. My last show and tell I wanted to show you was this thing right here. His mouth looks kind of crazy. I don't know if you'll be able to see him. But this was done with my quill pen. I was just having some fun, just trying around, trying to see what could you, what I could do. So, anyway, I don't know if you can see him very well. So does anybody have any questions about just what I've done today? I'm going to look back up and through here, see if I can see anything. All my show and tell. <laughs> okay, let me look. Has that bot guy been driving you guys nuts? We've already answered. Let's see. Yes, you can do it with your maker. <clears throat> yeah.
Yay, Barbara. <laughs> yes, I'm going to have to tell that guy not to boot people's things if they ask questions. Um, did Tam uh, Tammy probably already answered your question, Rebecca? You had said, are there images and silhouette software that can be used when using the Cricut? And I imagine that, um, yes, Tammy did. She said, you can turn any of the images into an SVG and silhouette to use. Or if you buy anything from the Silhouette Design Store, as long as you buy the SVG version, you can also use those in Cricut. <clears throat> Oh, I see my little buddy said to like and subscribe. I hope y'all have subscribed if you haven't yet, and please like. <laughs> yeah, just be sure to check the SVG. I'm not sure the weight. The weight cardstock that I was using for the base was one that won't go through my printer. That's why I keep using it for the base. But in general, I use 65 pound, like Tammy said. Who's going to the movie, Carmen? <laughs> oh, Downton Abbey, cool. <laughs> you don't, Jules? Y'all don't live like that over there? I'm gonna have to look up that. Let's see. Yes, Silhouette Business Edition absolutely would work with the maker. Definitely. This is just a software, and as long as you can save things with a software as an SVG, it works. Or a JPEG for the print and cut. So I guess that's about it. Does anybody else have any other questions? Thank you all for joining me. Yep. Okay, well, I hope if you haven't joined our Facebook group that you'll join the group. I have the link for it down below, as well as the link to, um, well, both Facebook groups, I believe I have linked there. I have the information about the fonts that I used, and also the glyphs, the doodles, are down underneath. I think I said I was going to put something else down there. Oh, the sizes of the cards, if you guys want them. I don't know that you really want those, though. <clears throat> Thanks, Nicola. You're welcome, child. Thank you. Thanks, Cheryl Ann. All right. See you guys again soon. Yeah, thanks, Tammy. You're welcome. Oh, I love to do it, Barbara. <laughs> Ah, it's only $48. Y'all, that is such a good price because when I bought mine, uh, it was $99 because I bought mine through the Silhouette America store and they didn't have the discounted price that you can get if you use that link I have. So, okay. See you guys again soon. Bye.